Because I look like a camera win. Say cheers. Camera, how do you feel about this camera yeah. taking pictures with you? I feel excited. I feel, I feel excited. You know they're... Welcome to the Willow Weekly. A news and entertainment show for the Willow community. I'm Carlos. And I am Andrea. We're here in Newport Beach at Lido Theater for the premiere of The Longest Road. Thanks for joining us for this special episode of the Willow Weekly at the Newport Beach Film Festival. Stay tuned for interviews and pictures from the premiere. show Longest Road from the Newport Beach Film Festival, and Japan History Lesson, Students vs. Staff Soccer Game Announcements and more. Now let's take a look at this upcoming week's announcements. Saturday, April 29, Win and Triple Threat Express Yourself event. Friday, May 5th, end of the grading period. If I think about it too much, it comes back. You cannot oppress a people forever and think they're just going to lie down and take it. We Americans were watching on the news this mass exodus of these ethnic minorities. And then we're talking about astronomical numbers, 1.5 to 2 million refugees. Many of these people are doctors and lawyers and electricians and engineers and professional people. What is their future going to look like? I'll never forget the looks in their eyes. This one lady was saying, don't film us if you're not going to do anything about it. We have a great many of humanitarian groups, non-governmental organizations, who are trying to do the right thing. My name is Richard Campos. 63 years old. I was deployed in 2003. We were part of the invasion force. I saw on the news the atrocities that ISIS was doing in Iraq. I just knew I had to go back. This gentleman travels back and forth to Kurdistan trying to bring whatever humanitarian supplies he can. You know, Richard's been doing this. This is not his first trip. We lost almost 4,500 brave men and women. I think about that a lot. For whatever reason, we left it open-ended where it became like the Wild West. People all over the world, they just, we have this sense of, all right, there's a problem, let's go fix it. This is a need, and we will regret it if we don't come to the aid of these people. We may not change their situation overnight, but if we don't start somewhere, then we'll never get anywhere. Our main purpose in life is to help others. And if you can't, don't hurt. I kind of live by that. I just try to do better. Now check out our interview with the filmmakers from The Longest Road. Hello, Hello. my name is uh, Richard Campos, and I'm part of the uh, I'm part of the movie uh, The Longest Road, mm -hmm. and um, I'm in the movie, and uh, I had nothing to do with making the movie. Uh, Matthew Hall, who's a director, who is here, actually uh, made the movie of, the, of this documentary. Mm -hmm. It's a documentary about basically my travels. I'm a Iraq War veteran. I was there in 2003. Um, I've had some losses there so that had a big impact on me I see uh, what made you get involved with this longest road project when I got back from Iraq in which was the end of 2003 there was this uh, soldier named Mark Taylor in fact he was a officer in the army 
he was major at that time, Major Mark Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a doctor, and uh, he went to Iraq in 2004. And his father was Doug Taylor, who was my partner in the sheriff's office. I used to be a deputy sheriff and deputy marshal for almost 30 years. I see. His father, Doug Taylor, who was my partner and friend, his son, unfortunately, was killed in Iraq in oh. 2004. About a year later, unfortunately, my friend Doug, his father, mm -hmm. uh, could never get over the loss. That was his only child. Not only that, it was his son, but it was his only child. Yeah. So when his son was killed there, he took it so hard that his heart was broken, and he never mended, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And he died the following year, 2005. Oh, I see. So I, it, it, it became my life's mission to honor them. So I started looking and researching and finding medical equipment to take back to Iraq. My name is Carlos and I'm here with Kevin Graves. Can you tell me what made you want to get involved with the Longest Road Project? Absolutely. That one's an easy one. Um, so I'm what's called a gold star father. My son was killed in Iraq in 2006. And so for me, it was an opportunity to go and walk on the same soil that my son shed his blood on. And I I didn't actually get to the exact spot where he was killed, but I got within about 120 kilometers. So my initial reason for going over there was to be in the same country where my son was killed. But once I got there and I started to see what the film was about and what the mission was about, that became my primary mission. And um, and I fulfilled my my I felt fulfilled my own needs in being there and, and and seeing the country where my son was killed. And then I was able to help produce the film or help be part of the film. Film that tells the story of these people that are being persecuted. Glad of your life. Yeah, right. right. Um, can you tell me what made you want to be involved with the Longest Road Project? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I had always wanted to travel to the Middle East, and um, I really wanted to um, spend time over there. And uh, because of my because of my religion, my faith, and the persecution of minorities going on over there, I, I felt like I really needed to go over there and, and help tell their story. What would you like to say to people thinking about watching the movie? Uh, I would encourage them to check it out. We're not a big studio film. We're not a big, you know, Marvel movie or anything. So it's a small budget film. So we don't have a lot of money for advertising. So um, the main thing is, you know, if you see it, you spread the word and talk. Just talk about it and tell your friends to come see it and share it on social media so that other people can find out. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're I appreciate. Now, Japan history lesson. Hi, my name is Kaylee. I'm a Jumanzi's class, and we're studying about geography of Japan and the early inhabitants. The geography of Japan has has, has four more important major islands, and and it's, and it's just about the history that has happened all around the world. They're, they're most they're focused more on the four largest islands, and the, what's in common of the geography of Japan is that there's volcanoes they erupt they're, they're the biggest they, they erupt there, there hasn't been a quite um, eruptions or earthquakes in a while but they're in the north in the north and south have a different kind of weather north is it's um, cold and in the south it's tropical it's tropical and and this is all just based on Japan and his the history all around that has happened and thank you for listening up next student and staff soccer game pictures.
remember, Willard is now on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and Facebook. Thanks for joining us at the Newport Beach Film Festival. I am Andrea. And I am Carlos. And I am Cadmill. Don't miss out next week's show. We'll be featuring our open house pictures and scenes from Willard's production of Shrek the Musical Junior. Remember, you rock, and we'll see you at the movies. Oh. oh, I feel like this is grading period time. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Hey, hey, cool. Hey, 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 hey. You guys rock so much. You're so cool. I just want to tell you, you have a week homework pass in Mr. Petrie's class. How about that? No homework this week because you're so cool. <laughs> I don't think there was homework. <laughs>